Um, all right, Brian. Well, let's move on a little bit from the Mandalorian. We spent some good time on that. Uh, let's get to some canon connections here. Uh, we have three things to talk about. Uh, we haven't done this in a while. We're very excited to do it because we a lot of stuff coming up, obviously. But um, now that Padawan is now that Padawan's weekly, and and we're we're doing our best to stay up to, up to date with it with our daily lives, with work and everything. Um, we have a chance to talk about it. So let's let's kick this off with Spark of the Resistance. Um, the I guess you can call it a young adult novel. It is. It, that's um, what it's classified. Four hours long for an audiobook. Uh, it's about 20-so chapters as far as yeah, reading goes. I think it's only like 200 um, pages. You can almost call it a, a pickup sequel to The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Uh, very close in time frame. Uh, picks they, up. In the, they said months. Yeah, after. so it's very close in time frame. Yeah. Uh, Ray, Poe, Rose, um, no Chewie or Finn. They're off on some kind of mission or something but they do have the falcon they do and so and the porks um so it's this smaller crew but uh i gotta say i really enjoyed the book i did i i I thought it was really fun it's the first young adult short novel that i've read for star wars i haven't read any of the past ones yes you have lost stars is considered young adult lost stars is 40 chapters i'm talking like young small yeah yeah like oh yeah you did you read pirate's price no i didn't oh Okay, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> you read Pirates Wars. I did. Um, no, I so going into it, you know, I didn't really know what to expect because you see that it's short. You expect a little bit more kitty of a vibe. It was very enjoyable. It was classic Star Wars. It has Ray, Poe, um, and Rose in there as the kind of core three. Um, and I, I thought the adventure was cool. It's nothing like super um, game super changer. yeah game changer or important. I guess you could say to the movies or the overall story. But it, it's like the comics where it's a cool little side story. Yeah. Right? And it, it does tell some very interesting things about Ray with the Force. It's a nice little gap filler. Yeah, and, and it answers some questions with her about her training and what she's able to do already. And she seemed very... Much more mature. Yes, but she didn't... I was going to say she's not... She didn't seem very in tuned like that Oh, see, well. I, got, I got a different vibe. Because there were a couple times where they mentioned her like reaching out into the Force and not just like not feeling... Anything. See, I got a different vibe. I felt like she was, she was, she definitely knew what she was doing. That's what I'm saying. But like, yeah, there was, saying. there were a couple times where I felt I was like, does she really kind of know what she's doing? Yeah. But there were t- I, I like agree. towards the end, she was like, she felt out and such and such happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like, I think they're saving that for the movie. That's why. Oh, kind of or or this next book. Yeah. yeah never. I mean, I don't know if they'll do it for the book just because uh, they want to save that kind of stuff for the movies. Yeah. Um, but they could tease fans with obviously. Uh, I, I like I like Poe in this. I think it's classic Poe. It sounds like Force Awakens Poe. Po. I love the fact that he hates that she gets to fight. Oh, he's so amazing! He but then at the end, when yeah. she when she crushes against those fighters, he's like, I can see why. I'm yeah, like he, he totally be- eats his own shoe. Oh, he, he eats it. It's so funny because he's always just just like, oh, you want to fly? It's like, yeah, no, sorry, this is my shit. I love... And, and they made that clear. No, and that, that's what I was going to say. They made two things clear in this. One, the Falcon is 100% hers. Mm-hmm. 100% hers. Yep. Two, there is no romantic relationship between the two of them. No. Not at all. No. They are clear friends, clear allies, clear... They could be best friends, a good trio. Because he even flirted with... Uh, the other, the the other uh, character, the, the new random character. random new character. Yeah. And so there, there is 100% no romantic connection between yep. these two. Um, which is a good thing because I think it'd be too just too much to show in in the movie because there's only one movie left. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's a good indication for us a good kind of clear refresher I guess you should say. But the Falcon itself is really cool. The the yeah. flying scenes, how she flies, um, how she kind of commands when she's flying. You know, with Rose on the gun and everything yeah. like that. Um, I like the addition of Rose in this. It kind of shows her a lot. It made me like her character a lot she, more. She has, she has a lot more to do. Mm-hmm. She's really included and she talks about how. You know, she's she wasn't so whiny. She wasn't so whiny, like yeah, not, yeah. not whiny, but like we only saw her in the last Jedi, like being really upset about her sister. And totally, stuff. she was a badass in this. She was uh, on the gunner, like shooting Tie Fighters yeah. down and stuff. Like she they're, was dope. They're, they're a good little team, which yeah. gets me really excited because they didn't have Finn or Chewie with them. Imagine those two with them, and, and and we see that in the trailers that all of them are together a lot. Yeah, and so it'll be very exciting. And the, uh, of course, in the book, you had the addition of the Porgs. They're all over the place. Yeah, but they left like half of them they on. They, this, they, they're flying over the Falcon. I, I liked the new planet. I yeah. would have loved to see that planet because mm-hmm. the, they spent like a solid like a while like describing how it's mm-hmm. under this underground world, 
Were, okay, let me ask you this. What did you imagine when they were describing those new species? I imagine like cat people. Because how they kept saying they have like whiskers and stuff like that. I honestly, the first thing that came to mind was like the Greedo type. Really? Yeah. See, this is what I like about like, this. Like, like a Star Wars movie. alien. That's why it comes. It pops up. I literally head. had like a cat, like I the movie Cats, like the ugly, like these whiskered face things and stuff. But I loved, the, I loved the detail in this book. Yeah. Like how they were describing how like the the um, the plants hit off a certain light oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah, make yeah, the yeah. ground like mm-hmm. invisible for them to walk. And BB-8 was hilarious in this. He's always good. He was just like, it. Poe would say something and he'd be like, "I was the one that told you that." <laughs> and then Poe's like, "Oh, sorry, I have to give BB-8 yeah, credit for yeah. it." Well, that I their relationship's so good. Oh, it's and hilarious. that was that was also expanded on in Resistance too. Mm-hmm. Um, it, their relationship's always it's it's a very uh it's a very close in age brother type relationship. Yeah. Um, best buddies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what is it? Uh, Thunder Buddies for Life. Yeah. Thunder Buddies for Life. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a little short. Review. No spoilers there. It's a really cool book. It's a really short book. Yeah, there's very there's easy to no, read. Like, if you don't read it, you're not going to like... Yeah, but it, it's, a, it's a very cool thing. And like we mentioned, there's some cool things with Ray and Poe and, and Rose You just in finish there. it so fast. Exactly. Uh, but let's get on to the big one here. Resistance Reborn. Star Wars Resistance Re- Reborn, which is officially out. Uh, we will be getting a chance to read it here pretty soon. And we will talk about it on one of the upcoming episodes, or maybe even a separate episode. I'm not 100 percent sure. I want to finish it by next. <laughs> I know, yeah, I want to try to. Because people uh, are freaking there's out. A, there's, yes. It's a big book, though. It's a big book. It's um, a big book, and a new author that we have yeah. signed. So uh, look, this this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the big one. It's it's got Leia, Poe. It's got the whole all the entire cast. This is Wedge. This is essentially the sequel to the Last Jedi. This is like. This is um, eight and a half, if you want to say, yeah. um, for, for Star Wars. And so, and like you said, it does have Wedge until he's back. He's back in the book, which could be a precursor they for... They redid the cover to add yeah. him on. Well, after he was announced to be in exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, just anticipation. I mean, it's, it's going to be a quick conversation, but I, I can't wait to read this book. I think it's yeah. going to be some... It's going to be a la Lost Stars. It's going to be a la Bloodline, in my opinion. Um, I definitely think it'll be... It's... It's it's weird. I think it's it has an, a mixture of what aftermath was doing for the Return of the Jedi, and then a little mixture of like what Bloodline and Lost Stars was doing with like new territory. If but it's with characters any, that we have. If you can give me anything near Bloodline or Lost Stars, I'll fall out of my seat because those are arguably the two best books. Lost Stars, one hundred percent is. Yeah. So I mean, like, it's and people have been talking about this book yeah. for. A long Yeah, a lot of people have gotten time. early in this. Well, we saw them already advertising it in July at mm-hmm. Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Like they had all their books. This is the big one. Like this one like this was the one that was coming out next uh A Crash of Fate at Comic Con. It was coming out the next week. We got it a week early. They were not even talking about this one and already advertising this book that came out. Yeah. Yesterday. I'm I'm very, very excited to see what it reveals, what it shows. Um, kind of how it leads into the Rise of Skywalker because uh, all these books, it's the journey to the Rise of Skywalker, which exactly what um, Bloodline and Lost Stars and all those books did for The Force Awakens, yep. and and they were kind of leads into that movie. So um, they don't we'll, mess around with the. We'll try our best to get it done by next week, but I don't know if that'll happen. <laughs> our schedules are quite busy. Brian might blaze through it. I don't know if I'll be able to. But I will try my best. You're implying I don't have the life. I, I, I will. Tr- through it. I, maybe. I will try my best. Um, <laughs> and with Mandalorian coming. Oh, I know. I, there's a lot to do. Um, but yeah, so moving on from the books, let's talk a little bit of TV here. Uh, some animated TV. It's not going to be a very long conversation. Uh, but Star Wars Resistance, we're five episodes in right now. Um, all five episodes have pretty much been filler episodes. Nothing really major no, has happened. Not the first two. First two have it. Last three, absolutely. First two weren't they weren't really important. Yeah, but they set up that uh, the one girl going to Tam the first Tam going to the first order that type of stuff. But everything else has been like. But nothing is like they left off season one going to Dakar, which is where the resistance was. Yeah. In the beginning of the Last Jedi, and they left because the first order got there. They and they're still like on the journey to Dakar. Yeah. Like, they're stopping along the way for certain reasons, you know, whether it's um, 
not being able to use hyperspace or the first order tracking up with them or getting something. Food. There, there's just Whole stories about them getting food. Yeah, there's just these small stories, and I, I want to see them. And I understand why they're doing it because the Rise of Skywalker is still a little ways away, and I have a feeling it's gonna it's gonna like have some kind of connection, be something. And so I get that, but at the same time, it's like. Just tell us. Stop wasting my time. Yeah, just like, I mean, you left off on such, like, season one, this is exactly what season one did. We we lost track within, like, first four or five episodes. Yeah. We were we were done. Like, we couldn't handle it. And then we, and then Jacob mentions, like, just finish it. You guys will like it towards the end. The end got good. Like, yeah. it, it had the first order. Like, Kylo Ren was in there. Like, they had, like, like they had all of this stuff in there. And then they go back to what they did with the first one. I just want to see them, like, just... Show me. Yeah. Show Don't me. stop teasing us with like the first order showed up at the last second and then they jumped to hyperspace. They keep talking like, about oh how my God. they keep talking about how they're part of the resistance. Just show us that you're part of the re- yeah. We know that the Colossus is in that shot of the Rise of Skywalker. We don't need any more we pirates. We know he's in there. We don't need any more pirates. Stop giving us pirates. Mm-hmm. Like we freaking get it. Do you think <laughs> that this show is gonna connect to the movie at all? Do you think we'll see the Colossus in that shot? No. You don't think so? That ship is freaking huge. Like, that thing looks like it's the size of, like, a freaking planet. So you think that this entire time they're just, they're reaching out to try and find the resistance? Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. It's been over if, a year, though. I wouldn't be surprised if they're, like, a waypoint for people. Like right? a, like a, like a, an off port or yeah, like, like a resistance. Yeah, like, the Colossus becomes a port in space instead of a port in the ocean, like, a, port a portable base. Yeah. A portable base for the Resistance. For the Resistance. And that's how they end it. Like, we'll stay here and help you guys. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. And then that's the last time we see them. Interesting. Because that shit is freaking huge. Yeah, it's, it's big shit. Like, it, it, yeah, I, mean, I, it can't believe, I can't believe it sat in the ocean for that long. Yeah. Like, how big it was. So, I mean, and I, I look at that, like, shot and I'm like... I don't see it, it does. I mean, that doesn't have to be the entire shot. No. There will probably end up being a wider shot. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I have a hard time believing they'll be in it. That ship will be in it. I more likely see, like, that type of thing where it's like, we'll wait for you guys here. Or the Outer Rim people will stop here before they go into something or other. But I have a hard time think, seeing that they're going to put them Collide. together. I just hope that the show gets better because I'm starting to get that feeling like, oh, like I, I, I get a chore. So I, watch I watch it on my phone when I have the time and I literally just put it on. I, just, I audio it essentially. Yeah. Because there's, there's nothing really that is like attractive to me. Be like, oh, I need to watch this. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer. Like there's been some good moments like uh, them teaching the aces how to fly. was really, That's a cool episode. But on the overall story, it's nothing that we need to know of. Yeah. So I agree. Um, 